next piece is called A Song Without a Hero. That's based on a novel without a hero. That's a famous book by William Napier Thackeray. All that day, from morning until past sunset, the cannon never ceased to roar. It was dark when the cannonading stopped all of a sudden. All of us have read of what occurred during that interval. The tale is in every Englishman's mouth. And you and I, who were children when the great battle was won and lost, are never tired of hearing a recount in the history of that famous action. His resemblance wrangles still in the bosoms of millions of the countrymen, of those brave men who lost the day. They pants for an opportunity of revenging that humiliation. Only if a contest ending in a victory on their part should ensue, elating them in their turn and leaving its cursed legacy of hatred and rage behind to us, then there is no end to the so-called glory and shame to the alternations of successful and unsuccessful murder in which two high-spirited nations might engage. Centuries hence, we Frenchmen and Englishmen might be boasting and killing each other still, carrying out bravery the devil's code of honor. All our friends took their share and fought like men in the great field all day long, whilst the women were praying ten miles away. The lines of the dauntless Englishmen were receiving and repelling the furious charges of the French horsemen. Guns which were heard at Brussels were plowing up their ranks, and comrades falling on the resolute survivors closing in. Towards evening, the attack of the French repeated and resisted so bravely, slackened in its fury, and they had other foes besides the British to engage and were preparing for a final onset. It came at last. The columns of the Imperial Guard marched up the hill of St. John at length and at once to sweep the English from the heights which they had maintained all day. And in spite of all, unscathed by the thunder of the artillery, which hurled death from the English line, the dark rolling column pressed up. It began to wave and falter. Then it stopped, still facing the shot. Then at last the English troops rushed from the post from which no enemy had been able to dislodge them, and the guard turned and fled. No more firing was heard at Brussels. The pursuit rolled miles away. Darkness came down on the field and city, and Amelia was praying for George, who was lying on his face, dead, with a bullet through his heart. <laughs> 